Um, yeah, I guess like, yeah, education is definitely an important thing. I think I'd probably just say, you know, for people who aren't in yet, like a lot of people think, well, am I too late? You know, this thing's already at like $35,000 now. And, you know, it used to be at whatever $1 or less. And they think, oh, you know, I've missed a boat, but like, you know, like I've been, I've been buying, buying Bitcoin since, since 20, 2016. And, you know, I, I, like I bought my first Bitcoin for well under a thousand dollars and, like you know i'm still buying at current prices like i literally bought yesterday i take everything that i that i've earned well for the past year everything that i've earned i've put it into bitcoin so like you know i don't think you should be afraid of the price because you know <laughs> you're gonna like if you wait around for the price to be what you want or you're gonna you know if it went down to a dollar tomorrow people wouldn't buy it because like, oh, it's dead right so like um the important thing is to is to, to kind of get on board and ideally do some kind of like dollar cost averaging and maybe buy, you know, if you've got a regular salary, maybe buy in every week, maybe buy in every month, whatever it is. Um, you know, you don't have to buy a lot of Bitcoin at the current price to really have your share. Like it's still like, I don't know what the figure is right now, but something like, you know, if you put in like $200 now, you would have your global share of Bitcoin. You put in $200, you could sit on it and you know that you would be, you would have your one, you know, like, how many people in the world, like 8 million, you'd have your one 8 million piece of a Bitcoin by, by, by buying like $200 and you could just sit on that. Obviously, I don't think that's the right strategy because I, I have a lot of conviction in it, but you don't need to buy in a lot. You don't need to, to buy a whole Bitcoin. You can buy a fraction of a Bitcoin, uh, you know, and you can put in a little bit each time. The other, the other thing that, that I would say is like, you need, well, t- two things. First of all, you don't have to be like completely educated about it. I don't think that people should kind of wait until they fully understand the ins and outs of it it's constant learning process. I'm still learning about it now, like five years later, I'm still learning every single day about Bitcoin and, you know, like I'm still constantly surprised by it. So you don't have to be an expert, um, you know, just it's quite easy for people to kind of like set up on an exchange. If you want to do a decentralized route, yeah, okay, go and do a bit more research on it, but you can go onto an exchange and you can sign up, you can buy some Bitcoin, you know, take self custody when you can, but you don't have to do it immediately. You don't have to be right ready with a hardware wallet and all the rest of it. Mm. Just, you know, if you're buying just a little bit, if you're just buying a, you know, two or three hundred quid, like it's okay to leave on the exchange. Like I'm not saying that's a good good idea longer term, but you don't necessarily have to kind of like have everything ready to go. Just take self custody when you can, as soon as you can, take self custody. You know, because exchanges have been been hacked. It's happening, it's happening more and more rarely, but you know, if you just want to buy a little bit, it's okay to just buy it and then learn the next step. Then learn, okay, I bought some Bitcoin. Now how do I self custody? How what's the next step, etc. So, you know, it can be an evolving process. And as you, as you, you know, once you kind of like experience it, once you start using it, once you send a transaction, once you buy a bit on an exchange, you know, you'll be, in, you'll be kind of, um, you'll feel like you want to learn the next stage and you'll, yeah. your curiosity will continue to kind of progress. So, um, you know, yeah, that's why it's I kind important of to get going, just, isn't it? It's important yeah, to get, yeah, get because then the incentives going, kick yeah. in and then you start, you know, then the fear kicks in. Exactly. Like, I don't want to, but it's just the main thing is to not kind of sit on the sidelines, I guess, right? Exactly. Yeah. Don't sit on the sidelines for too long. You know, get in and then learn the next step as 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 you do it. Buy some, okay, self custody, learn more about it, learn more about the technology, whatever it is, learn how to send, send and receive, etc. The other the other thing I would say is like a lot of people I think right now are looking for, you know, a kind of a kind of like movement. You know, I see a lot of people in this kind of like the, the kind of freedom movement who are saying, you know, we need a movement. What is it going to be? And there's all these like disparate groups who are saying, you know, um, join this telegram group and join that and join the other and you know, go to this protest and we need a worldwide process. And this is all great. Like I, I'm not knocking any of it, but you know, Bitcoin really does unify so many people into a common cause. You know, it's, it's really just taking everyone and saying, you know what, if you want a, if you want a unified movement that's going to really make a change, you know, run a node like with these consensus rules, opt out of the traditional finance system. Okay, maybe not entirely, you know, I'm not saying just go 100% in, at least on day one, but like, you know, start taking your money out of the fiat system, start taking it out of the purview of governments. Uh, you know, that is going to devalue currency. You know, I mean, you could look at the price rise of Bitcoin and you could say, oh, Bitcoin's gone up, but you could also look at the same thing and say, that's fiat currency collapsing, right? It's collapsing into Bitcoin, it's collapsing into all these other scarce assets, it's collapsing into gold and houses mm-hmm. and all the rest of it over time. And that is ultimately, if we want um, change, uh, that's a good thing because we, you know, with the, the way, with the place that governments are at now, like my view is like the sooner that they completely collapse, the better, because the sooner that you, you can no longer, you know, pay police to go and arrest people for opening their business and trying to earn a living for their family, the sooner that you can um, take money out of that system and, and, and you can devalue the currency so that the government can't even pay those police anymore. And the government are being starved of the, the kind of lifeblood, which is, 
um, continuing all of this madness, the better. And, you know, if everyone just kind of like starts to opt into this new system, we can build something new. And, uh, you know, it, it really is a kind of, it's a great community. It's, um, it's completely decentralized. It's worldwide. And, you know, all it takes is just, it's just opting in and then, you know, kind of like um, getting more involved and, you know, learning more about it. And we're building a new system right now, which is predicated on rules for building a better world. And, you know, I think that ultimately it's a great movement to be involved with. And, and I believe it's the, it's the most important movement in the world right now. I mean, mm. so yeah, like people looking to get involved in something, I think Bitcoin, I, I kind of found the, you know, a kind of second family with the with the Bitcoin community, and I think a lot of people kind of feel that you know it's they they really do share a lot of these values that of the same people who are going to these protests what they want like these views are kind of espoused in that community. Yeah, um, definitely something that you notice is how committed people are, and, and yeah, what you said was a really good point in terms of like you know fight back. Bitcoin is like a global network which is like coordinated by very definition, right? In terms of like the the nodes running in, yeah. And so it's like it's a way to literally coordinate in a very organized way because you have this very powerful system that's been going for 10 years, coordinating, you know, sort of giving, putting everyone on one network. It's a global kind of network hitting the system at the highest point of leverage, right? Which is the financial system yeah. in terms of like um, kind of switching across to that. So yeah, so it's a really yeah, good point I mean, in terms yeah. of like from, from an activist perspective, it's just like, it's it's actually it, it's it's it you know it's not necessarily a just it, it, like can't be even called a distraction because it's hitting them right where it hurts in a very coordinated way right yeah mm. exactly and you know that that is at the heart of, like you said it, it's it's coordinated in the fact that everyone's just running a node which has this you know which is saying we're gonna we're gonna um, verify blocks according to these consensus rules and these nodes are running all over and everyone's essentially saying, uh, you know, I'm going to protect your, your value. I'm going to protect the value that you have on this chain. I'm going to run my node. You know, the miners are doing their bit and they're securing the chain. And everybody's basically saying, you know, everyone's incentivized to the, to the exact same uh, result, which is having complete sovereignty over your own wealth and taking it out of the hands of governments and stopping it from being like, you know, um, just inflated, uh, inflated away into kind of into nothing over time and um so yeah like it's a it's a real it's a real revolution that, that's happening and you know you can kind of look at it almost as if like we're, we're kind of encrypting our value we're, we're taking you know our ownership and we're encrypting it and we're saying you cannot you know we're saying to governments it's impossible for you to take this from me you know the governments can take any, anything from you and people people are, are worried about uh, the whole great reset and you know i will uh, i will i will own nothing and i will be happy and all this nonsense well you know like in order for, for, for governments to try and take your Bitcoin, they, I mean, they, they literally have to have to come and they would have to, they would have to torture you to the point that you actually give up your keys. That's the only way. I mean, if they want to take anything else, they want to take your gold, they can take it. If they want to take your house, they can take it. They just come in and say, there you go, that's my property now. They want to mm -hmm. take your, the wealth in your pocket, they just print it. They just print more of it and they say, okay, sorry, I've just, I've just printed. I think um, last, over the past year, the USA, they, it was something like they printed like 30% of their entire monetary supply in one year. So everybody's value, theoretically, I mean, you don't know necessarily exactly where it's gone and you could argue, oh, well, you know, inflation's not up that much or whatever, but like we know factually, given how much they printed, that they've just inflated the money by, by 30%. So you just devalued everyone's money by that amount. Um, so, you know, Bitcoin is impossible to do that. So even your money's not safe. The money in your bank account isn't safe. Uh, you know, in fact, it's less safe in the bank account because uh, this is this is an, another um, thing, thing worth mentioning is that if you're, this is, I think, why they're going for this kind of cashless, cashless society is because if, if you have things like negative interest rates, which come into existence, which they're, they're already, I think they're already doing them in some European countries and they're probably going to do them in the UK as well, um, is that what's people's financial incentive? If their bank is basically saying, oh, okay, you had a thousand pounds last year, but, uh, you know, you've got a negative interest rate of minus, uh, minus 2% and now you've got, you know, somewhere in a region of like 90, 90 uh, whatever, 980 pounds or whatever it is. Right. If, if that's what they do, um, then people's incentive is to go and take their money out of the bank and hold it in cash and store mm -hmm. it under their under their bed. But as we know from fractional reserve banking, like they don't actually have that money. If everyone tried to go and take all the money from the bank, like the mm -hmm. banks would have to would have to immediately uh, print loads more money. And because uh, it's impossible because they're lending out your money and they fractionally reserved it like that's how the system is working. So so, you know your money's not safe uh, in the bank. You're actually better off taking it out in cash. And this why, is why I think they're trying to ban cash is because if they ban cash, then it makes no 
it's no use withdrawing your money. So everyone's like, well, we'll just have to deal with it. We'll just have to mm. deal with the fact that the government's stealing, you know, X percent of my money um, every year through negative interest. Um, bit of a, a diversion from the original point, but um, you know what I'm saying here is that you know your assets aren't safe, your money mm. isn't safe. Um, th there is really only one place, which is not only you know the most safe place to, to keep your your assets, but possibly the only safe place in the world, which is on the Bitcoin network, mm. which is keeping your assets in a decentralized uh, global monetary system. Um, and so yeah, like that's the importance of it. Like I think mm. it can't really be understated. The price is going to go up and down. Don't try and trade. Just you know, buy in it whatever you can, and you know, recognize that this is a this is kind of encrypting your encrypting your wealth out of the purview of governments. Yeah, no, that's a really good, also a really good take on the you know the cash versus Bitcoin argument. What you just you know you know what you just said there. Um, awesome, that was that was excellent. In terms of where people can can find and learn more more about you, um, yeah, I'll I'll put it on in the description. But yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um. I mean. On Twitter, I'm Johnny Hoddle, J-O-N-N-Y-H-O-D-L. Um, on that page, I've got my uh, I've got my Telegram group, which is uh, Bitcoin Resistance. Uh, there's a link to it on there. Maybe you can put a, put a, a link as well in the um, in the description. But yeah, people are welcome to kind of go on there and talk to me. Like it's pretty much just me kind of ranting about Bitcoin. But you know, I welcome like the, the purpose of the group is just to get newcomers who are who are kind of coming into a space who have no experience, who just want someone who has experience with it. Because I know that I didn't really have that when I was getting in and I, and I, you know, had a lot of kind of hurdles really like um, getting into the space. So I just kind of want to try and, you know, be someone who people can actually talk to if they don't have anyone in their immediate friend group. If you do, if you know a Bitcoiner or something in your immediate friend group, great, go and speak to them. But, uh, you know, that's the purpose of the group is just to help people kind of get onboarded. Um, you know, my DMs are open on Twitter if people want to contact me. And, um, yeah, that, that's about it, really. Yeah. yeah, I really recommend people, particularly if you're kind of early in the journey of your journey of Bitcoin, I really recommend that you you join that group. There's lots of really good information just about what, about the kind of broader stuff, some of the stuff we've touched on today, but also more practical stuff about how to get on, how you know how to buy your first Bitcoin, how to store it, and whatnot. Um, so yeah, I I really really highly recommend that. Um, but yeah, other than that. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for coming on, Johnny. That was awesome. Yeah, th thanks for having me. It's been, it's been really good. Glad to chat. Cheers.